my uh, producing partner pitched me the short story about eight or nine years ago, and I thought it was a wonderful premise for a movie um, that your protagonist would be fighting fate, but fate isn't an abstraction. Fate are a group of guys who are sort of in the background in your life. You don't really realize they're there. They're in a crowd. They might be 20 feet away from you, or or they might be across the street, but they're subtly altering your life so you stay on plan. Um, so I actually optioned the short story with my own money very shortly after hearing that pitch, and um, and it, I've I've had it under option since then since the movie was made. So yes, a protracted period because eight or nine years. And were there other people involved with it before um, before you? Did anybody else intend to direct it, or did you always intend to direct it? Obviously, you're you're a writer with five or six movies to your credit. So uh, <coughs> yeah, I. I, I always intended to direct it. Um, again, just that first response from my my producing partner um, uh, pitching it to me is, is what I followed. You know, it's like if you feel that strongly about something, then that's probably the thing that you're going to take the time and effort it takes to get a screenplay that's good enough to get a movie star and then take it into a, a studio and have a studio, you know, be willing to fund it. Was it the fate element in it that appealed to you? The conflict between fate and free will and the ability to take that abstraction of fate and turn it into scenes between actors where there's conflict and it, that's what a movie is about. A movie is about human beings interacting, not about a person interacting with an idea. And did you always intend to cast this pair, Emily Blunt and Matt Damon? No, Matt was uh, in fairly early on because I I'd met him, uh, I wrote Ocean's Twelve and I was, I was on the set for... Um, the whole shoot, basically, of Ocean's Twelve. And uh, I had been developing the story, but I didn't have a screenplay yet. And when I met Matt, I thought, oh, he fits so well into what I'm trying to do here. Um, so I wrote the first draft for him and, and took that to him. And uh, and he expressed interest. Um, and so I was always sort of thinking about it for Matt. Once Matt committed after, like, the second draft, um, then it was a question of, uh, and we got the movie Greenlit, uh, meaning got it funded. Mm. Uh, it was a question of finding somebody who could act opposite him and really hold the scenes with him. And um, I looked far and wide. I looked actually for professional dancers because the person that he falls in love with is a professional dancer. And um, I couldn't find anybody. And then I looked for actresses who could dance and I, I, I couldn't find the right match. Um, and then uh, Emily Blunt came to us and uh, was very straight. I can't dance at all. I've never danced in my life. But I'll work really hard and be good at faking it, uh, is what she said. And um, so we screen tested her, and she read the sort of first scene where they the, where they meet and fall in love, and uh, you know it was just obvious to me very quickly that that she was the one, and that they had incredible chemistry together, and that you know as a director casting the right people, casting for that chemistry is a is a huge part of mm -hmm. what you need to do. And then you know you just provide them the opportunity on set to let it go. You don't stifle it. We all know what he has, what Matt Damon has. What do you think she has? As, are you talking about as, as an actor. a, a actress? Emily's incredibly uh, naturalistic in the same way Matt is, a able, to, uh, able to really inhabit characters and make you believe that the emotions she's feeling are real and never overwrought, never um, uh, sort of heightened, but just this is, this is real life. Um, so crucial for this movie, so crucial for my vision of this movie anyway, because I always wanted to ground the kind of fantastical uh, um, premise with a, with a very realistic uh, telling of the story. Um, is it true that, um, I read it somewhere, that Philip K. Dick's daughters um, co-produced the movie, did they? Right, they, well, that, that was part of our, our optioning deal, yeah. I see. And it, someone, I read somewhere that, they, um, that they, 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 they've sought to protect his, his stories, but I think you have changed it fairly substantially from, from the short story, have you? Yes, uh, very uh, substantial changes, but also remember it's a 10-page or so short story, and it is, it's, it's basically a, a guy who, um, there's a talking dog that works for the adjustment team, it's called, and the dog's supposed to bark at a certain time, doesn't, and so the, the uh, protagonist, who's a, a sort of an everyman insurance salesman, um, arrives at work and, and sees behind the curtain, as it were, sees that uh, his boss is frozen and adjustment team members are working, operating on his head. So I took that notion and I put it in the movie, obviously, I got rid of the talking dog and I turned that into a real character. 
Um, but there was I still had to invent a three dimensional protagonist, and and the love story is completely added, and 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 all the the characters in the adjustment bureau are added. And then I, I wanted to do um, a tone that was different, uh, uh, and a little more fanciful, a little more light, a little some humor. Um, so there were a lot of things that I wanted to change, and and I you know the the daughters of of uh, Philip K. Dick are I believe it, and I think they're right that there are a lot of ways to tell his stories. Um, not to directly compare the two, but I mean just think of how many different ways people can do Shakespeare. You know, I mean that's obviously a it's a, it's a big distinction, but you, it, you, you see the point. It's um, great authors with great ideas. Um, uh, I think if they were alive today, they would be happy that people are, are taking their work in different directions. Had you written, by the way, had you written another Bourne film? I worked on a script, um, um, just one draft of it, um, because uh, Matt and Paul uh, have decided that they're not, at least in the near term, uh, Matt, Damon and Paul Greengrass have decided, at least in the near term, they're not going to do another Born. So, the studio is going to go in a in another direction, but n in no way forecloses the possibility in the future of Matt and Paul coming back and doing another Born. Would you like to direct a Born movie? It's not really for me because I've got two scripts that are I'm in the process of putting finishing uh, touches on, and um, they're both ones I want to direct. So that would take me about the next seven years of my life, and um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to to work on one as a writer. Um, but you know, I've, I've got a lot of things that I I want to do myself. So, yeah. your producer, um, writer, and director. Of this are you on to the next level now? If that's the right way to describe it, uh, is this the way you want to continue? Uh, I definitely want to direct again. Um, that's the next thing I want to do, and I definitely want to direct uh, original material. Um, Producing I, I like as well, independently. Um, I, want, I want to produce my own stuff um, with other people because you need other producers. Um, but I also like the idea of producing for other people, developing material and helping guide it, getting it set up. Um, and I will also write for other people, just not whole scripts. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to, if I'm going to write whole scripts from beginning to end, I, I'm gonna, I want to direct them. It's more like uh, if somebody wants me to come in for two weeks or for you know, three weeks and say, you know, fix something. Yeah. So your next project will be what? Well, like I said, I've got these two scripts mm. that I'm almost done with both of them. I've got drafts of and I need to revise. Um, and I, when I, f when I get this movie out the door and it's out in the world, uh, I'm going to uh, take a vacation for a week or two and sit back and say, okay, which one of these scripts do I really want to do the polishing on? Um, and then uh, try to try to do one of those, try to get an actor and go do that.